Our hearts beat to the city streets. I got up from my beautiful sleep as I was yawning while looking at myself in a floor length mirror which was placed right in front of my bed. Why any wake up you will be late for the office? She yelled from the living room. I am awake, mummy. I yelled back, taking off the blanket from my feet. It's been six months I have been working in a company and still it's so much pain to get up early in the morning. Day after day, an endless cycle of getting up, showering, dressing up, no breakfast, going to office, working a cup of hot black coffee, more working, coming back home, helping mom in the kitchen to make dinner, and then falling into a sleep. After having a dinner, days went by fast or seemed to be an eternity. It's the first snow of the year, though my body is too cold to get up off the warm and cozy bed, but I will have to sacrifice my peaceful sleep. I got up with a groan and with foot stomping, I walked to the bathroom like a zombie. After a few minutes, I was back in my room, taking out a red shirt along with a black skirt. I jumped into it quickly and then ran to the dressing table to apply mini my makeup on my face to look elegant and professional. After quickly getting ready, I went downstairs to the kitchen where my mom was making breakfast while dad had already left for the office. Mom smiled at me and handled me a lunchbox though I have told her thousands of times that I don't have it as I always distribute it among my colleagues but still mom prepares a lunchbox for me. Yeah, I am very pampered child. I am a, I have a big family. Dad, mom and elder brother who always wonders why I wanna work but I always shut his mouth saying that I have earned this degree and I love working and living my life on my own terms. Saying goodbye to mom, I grab my car keys and then left for the office. Arthur spoke, after grabbing a cup of Americano from the nearby coffee shop, you walked hurriedly to your core ghost cabin. You knocked at the door and he ordered you to come in. You walked over to him with a smile and then placing cup in front of him, you bowed down at him. Here you go, sir, a cup of freshly brewed Americano. You said smiling a little at him. Jungkook looked at you for a moment and then he brought a cup near his lips. Taking a sip, he pressed his lips in a thin layer which showed he liked the taste. Going down at him, you were about to go out when he called you from behind. Miss Wyan, I need your help to do some changes in a presentation which will be helping uh, in half an hour. He said pressing the pen between his teeth. But sir, I have already did a lot of changes in it. You said looking back at him. Yeah, you did, but still there are some mistakes. You won't be able to do that alone in half an hour. So come here, I will help you. He said getting up from the chair as he walked to the couch and putting the laptop on the table. He plopped down on it. You nodded in yes and walked to the couch with slow steps as your heartbeat was beating fastly after seeing him die. After adjusting yourself on the couch beside him, you opened your eyes wide to see what he changes in it. Each time he did some changes in the presentation, he looked at you to explain you everything. You both were to it that you didn't even realize that you were few inches. Suddenly the door knocked. Janku made a frustrating look and let the person come in. It was Daisy, one of your colleagues, clicking her high heels on the floor. She walked inside boldly. Mr. Jun Jungkook, I need your signature here, she said in her voice, but soon her mouth wide open when she saw you sitting beside Jungkook while your face is This man doesn't look at any woman, but now why he forget that? Why he said to this? Maybe she did some magic on him, she's such a witch, she said and looked at you, confused. Where he asked coldly as she sent extended file to him. Oh, here, Mr. Jungkook, she said, leaning closer. You made a annoying face, looking at her in a disbelief. It was enough to make Jungkook pissed off. Throwing the file on the floor, he got up. That Daisy, you are fired right now, he yelled out, making you both tremble. You got up with fearful eyes while Daisy started to cry fakely. 
But why, sir? I didn't do anything. She says sobbing faintly. You want me to explain it? It's been a week. I have been noticing your cold behavior, but I let it go, thinking that you will be changed. But no, you won't. So there is no reason for you to stay in my office. He said out of with his hand balled into fist. How he could fire anyone so easily? He is so cold. I understand Daisy should maintain. Listen from him, but how he can fire her like this? I will also have some distance from him. Otherwise, I will also be kicked out from this office. You thought in your mind while gulping down. I'm sorry, sir, but please don't fire me like this, please, sir. She said with teary eyes, "Get lost right now. I don't want to see you any more." He said, pointing at the door while moving his other hand in his hair. Daisy glared at you, and with nose flaring, she walked outside the cabin. Jungkook turned toward you and looked at you, which made him sigh. Secretary Wyan, did I scold you? He asked, looking into your eyes. You shook your head, looking down at his shoes, as you were scared. Then what's wrong with you? He asked, looking at you. You scrunched your eyebrows and looked down at your head, which was trembling like the jelly. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You murmured while wiping off sweat from your forehead. Fifteen minutes already have been wasted in this. Now let's get back to the work. He said, sitting on a chair while opening the laptop. You gulped down and sat on the edge of the sofa. Body Jungkook looked at you and let out a chuckle sarcastically. Secretary Wyan, seriously, am I monster? Well, if you come closer, he asked, looking at you in a disbelief. No, sir, I am fine here. You said awkwardly, smiling at him. Do you think you will be able to see what changes I did from there, Miss Wyan? I am sorry, but you are pissing me off now. He said coldly, looking at your face. You got up quickly and sat beside him with a fake white smile, which made Jungkook smirk internally. While he was explaining to you, you could feel on your face, which made your heartbeat race faster. You were finding difficulty to understand what he was explaining to you, and why not so? When a man like Jungkook sitting beside you, you were now sweating more than Jungkook. He replied, "Mr. Jungkook, you have already explained this point to me." You said, looking at him with bambi eyes. Oh, did I? Let's go then. He said, shutting down the laptop in mind. Why she is so attentive? Can't he shut her mouth? So for a while, he got up and buttoning up his coat, he was about to walk outside the cabin when you called for him from behind. Mr. Jungkook, you can't go to the meeting, Dad. I mean, look at your condition. You asked, looking at him. What happened to me? He asked, being confused. You look like mess. Look at yourself. You said and showed him the front camera of your mobile phone. He looked at himself and his eyes widened. Oh my! He thought to himself. His hair all messy, her open loose and tight shirt seemed like it had not been pressed. It's fine, Mr. Jungkook. You still look handsome. You said, looking down to hide your blushing face. Lips are pure. Face smile crept his lips. I look what? He asked. You step back. Suddenly, Jungkook's mobile phone rang, making you sigh in relief. He looked at you and then, fetching out a mobile from his pocket, he answered the call. Yeah, I am coming. Saying this, he cut the call and staring at you for one last time. He walked outside the cabin. You took a deep breath, realizing that you were still alive, and then walked outside. It was half lunch break time, so you decided to go to the nearby coffee shop to get a cup of freshly brewed black coffee. As you read the office reception area, suddenly a girl with her two bodyguards entered in, deliberately bumped into you. Oh, I'm sorry. You said, backing off a little. Who the hell are you? She asked rudely while taking off her sunglasses. I am. I am Mr. Jungkook's secretary here. You said in a low tone. What you said, Mr. Jungkook? He's your boss. How you can call him by his name? She asked, glaring at you. But everyone here called. You were speaking out innocently, but she interrupted in. Oh, just shut up, you witch, and stay away from my boyfriend. She yelled at you. You looked at her, frowning. 
boyfriend you asked in a disbelief tone as far as everyone know he is the person the girlfriend how he could have a girlfriend all of sudden any problem you idiot get out of my way and stay away from cookie he is soon to be marry me she said giving you an annoying look cookie you said slowly as you were really shocked If he has a girlfriend, then why he keep it a secret till now? Maybe he feels uncomfortable. Then why he was so to miss? You thought to yourself, and with foot stomping heels, you walked outside. You were sitting in a car with John Cook sitting next to you. With every passing moment, you were dragging yourself on to the car door, only to maintain from him as you thought it's to stay closer to him when when he has his own girlfriend. From the moment the girl told me to stay away from him, I am trying every possibility to maintain in my mind, thinking that girl must be his girlfriend. That's why she is insecure about him. Otherwise, why would she just get jealous of me or call him cookie? I want to go back home to isolate myself in my room from the moment I came to know that Mr. John Cook has a girlfriend. But why he never mentioned about her? Why he let feelings for him? Right now, when he is sitting beside me, I wanna tell him everything, but I am not able to form some words. It feels really sad to ask him about her girlfriend. What do I know? It's been an hour that I have been noticing why and she is behaving so weird. Why she is avoiding me all of a sudden? When I told her that we are gonna visit the Lamai Hotel, as I have to book some bedrooms for my Russian clients, they are really important clients of mine, so I will check everything by myself to make sure that they don't have to face any problem. I told Vyan that she is also going with me, but she refused, saying that she has a lot of work in the office seriously. Then I said if she won't obey me, I will fire her as I did to Daisy, and gladly she agreed to come with me. The driver stopped the car. I quickly got off to open the car door for her, but she already got up from the car, which made me sigh heavily. Her this much attitude is getting on my nerves. Her asking her look back at me. Secretary Vian, what is wrong with you? I asked, looking into her eyes. She took. What are you doing, Mr. Janku? Girlfriend, so I'll be more better if you stay away. She said the most unexpected thing. I looked at her with confusion. What you said, girlfriend? Did you hit your head with something? I asked, crunching my eyebrows. I didn't hit my head on anything, but you did, Mr. Jankook. You have girlfriend, but still you are holding my hand. She said, trying to jerk off. Man, my nose started to flare and my mouth tightened as I glared at her. I don't have any girlfriend. Do you have any idea that you are hurting me by saying that I have girlfriend? Someone like this? I asked, gritting my teeth. I was really hurt, but I didn't want to show her that she was hurting me by mentioning someone whom I didn't even know. Her eyes softened as she looked at my face. But today, a girl came in the office and called you his boyfriend in front of every man. She also wants. Away from you, she looked at me innocently. That girl, I thought in my mind, but suddenly I recall about Minji, my cousin's sister, who calls me her boyfriend, and she doesn't want anyone to roam around me. Cause once I get married, her mom will send her back to the Busan, and she won't be able to live in my house anymore. So she calls me her boyfriend. So in this case, girls will stay away from me. Such an idiot girl she is. I thought to myself, Miss Mayan, let me explain everything to you. I said I told her the reality. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Jungkook. I shouldn't have doubted you. Rather, I should ask you myself. She said regret was lingering in her eyes. No, Miss Mayan, you hurt me, and you will have maybe some time later. I smiled, looking at her, and then walked inside the hotel. Her blushing face made my heart fill with butterflies. Mr. Jungkook, you can check all the arrangements. We tried our best to do everything perfectly. I hope you will like it too. He said, warmly smiling at him. 
Well, I like the interior of the hotel. I would love to take tour of the hotel. He said, looking around. It's been an honor for us. My secretary, Lara, will guide you. He said, calling for his secretary, who reached there quickly. She bought a junk cook with a smile. Show him around. He said, smiling. She nodded and walked forward. This way, please, she said and started giving you both a tour. John Cook, while Lara was walking next to John Cook as if she was his girlfriend, you were feeling like a third wheel as Lara was explaining every John Cook. Lara then leads you to one of the rooms. So, the rooms here by most famous architects of the world who were specially called in Seoul to design them. This chandelier, she was cut off by John Cook. Which made you sigh in relief because from last half an hour, Lara was speaking continuously like a robot, which literally gave you a headache. Suddenly, Lara's fear slipped and she fell on you, making you feel with the jealousy. This girl, I'm standing right next to her. Then why she can cook who is far away from her? She could hold my hand for sport, but no, this girl had to fall on I looked at Mr. Jungkook who was getting pissed off now as he jerked her hand away making it obvious. You said to yourself, Miss Lara, it will be better if he said coldly while fixing his tie. Lara looked down in embarrassment and forced a smile at Jungkook who rolled his eyes. He glanced at you and smirk wrapped on his lips when he noticed jealousy on your face. It's enough for today's secretary. Why let's go back to the office? He's checking the time on his wristwatch. You nodded and slowly walked behind him. It's been two hours since you came back to the office. You were sitting on the chair doing your incomplete work. Everyone was leaving for their houses while you had still a lot of unfinished work to do. One of her colleagues came to you who was putting her stuff in her bag. Why you should have also leave now office timing is over she said looking at you as you were engrossed in your work but i have a lot of work to do still you said typing fastly on the laptop but when is too late you must be tired now she said you shrugged off your shoulders resting your back on the chair you realized that you were really tired okay fine you said getting up from the chair You were about to shut off your laptop when you got an email from Jungkook to complete the letter which was supposed to be submitted tomorrow. You had already prepared the draft so you had to just adjust some files. Your click sighed and patting your shoulder she left outside the office. No one was in the office except you and Jungkook. After some time, he called you to come into his cabin as he wanted to see the letter. You walked to his cabin while your heart was beating fastly. You knocked at the door and he let you come in. The office was so dark, only dim light was on. You saw Jungkook sitting on the chair staring at you which made you gulp down. You walked to him slowly and showed him a letter. Sir, here is the letter. I prepared it for you. You said showing him a letter. Jungkook looked at it and then placed it on his table as he stared at your face. It's perfect. He said staring at you. Your heartbeat raced faster as you looked into his bone chilling eyes. Miss Vyan, will you please handle me the blue file? He asked pointing at the table on which the file was placed you nodded and clicking up the file from the table you placed it on the table with a smile. May I go Saru asked for your cheek sitting up. Actually Miss Vyan can you please close the window it is too cold outside. He said smiling at you you forced a smile and went to close the window as you closed it you walked back to him. I may leave no you said looking at him while smirking face. Miss Vyan actually, he was speaking gold but you cut him off as you walked to him. Mr. Jungkook, don't you have any solid reason to stop me in your cabin? You asked. It was enough to make him crazy. His heartbeat rapidly increased as he, his lips. Actually, I do have, he said in his melodious voice. Sir, you said, go back, Miss Vyan, he said.